Okay, it's now time to machine the valve eccentric. Uh, it starts off with a piece of just mild steel bar, one and a quarter diameter by about three quarters long. So we'll mount it up and begin the machining process. Turning this down to size. I'll bring you back soon. Okay folks, the offset on this eccentric it's called for 964 which is 3.571 millimeters. So what I did I offset the bar stock with a dial indicator 3.71 millimeters or 3.7 millimeters as a test I turned it down till it just touches here and measure the offset there and luckily Let's get this right. Just bear with me. The camera's in the way again. Three point five. So that's pretty close. Have we still got a fraction to go, so that'll bring it down to three point five seven. So I'll turn this down to size. And then I will start the center section. Now the plans call for a, a ridge in the center to stop the eccentric from moving. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to do what they do on normal 
steam locomotives and have two, if you like, collars on either side and the centre will be recessed so the eccentric will run in the middle of the cam. I'll bring you back later and show you that. So it's going to be different to this. This is this is not very effective, I don't believe. Hi everybody, just now the eccentric in the four jaw chuck. What we'll do is we'll turn down this front face, pull the center out. Um, not to size, oversized, because it has to be cut. We'll drill, tap, bolt back together, and then finish the ball. I just want to clean the ball up a bit so I can get some measurements off it. It's pretty roughly cast. The main thing I'm interested in is the two faces, the front and back face. So we'll see how we go. We just take a face and cut. Just to see how it looks. Actually, that's chewed up pretty well with just a light cut. I might um, change the tool and do a finishing cut on this side. It's pretty good as far as being square. I'll bring you back. What I've decided to do is to bore this out to an inch. The finish size is an inch and sixteenth. So I've got plenty in there to play with. So I'll bore it out to an inch and then I'll be able to mount it on my one inch mandrel that I use for other machining. So I'll be able to do the face, the cuts, the milling, everything on this mandrel. So I'll do that. I'll do that off camera. It's only a matter of taking a few more fowl out. And then we'll bring you back. So I've mounted this on the mandrel. Super glued it on. So I'll be able to face it down, then put it in the milling machine, and continue. So we'll mount it up, and bring you back.
So I'll bring this down to size, which has got to be a quarter of an inch, and then uh, do the rest of the machining in the middle, link machine. Okay, I've removed the eccentric from the mandrel using the heat method that I've done in other videos. Split it, milled the two or the four faces, and now I've bolted it together and mounted it in the four jaw chuck to bore the centre to the dimension, which is one and the sixteen. Ready to go. Okay, I'll continue to bring it down to size and I'll bring you back. Well, the eccentric's finished. I did most of the machining, not most, but a lot of machining off camera, trying to reduce the size of the videos. As I explained in the previous video, I've machined two flanges either side and the centre section is flat that's to allow the brass eccentric to run in the centre like that So that locates it and stops it from wandering from side to side. This is now finished, machined. I've got an aura hole in there. The only thing left to do on this is to drill two holes in here for the bar that goes back to the valve gear. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll just assemble it up for you, just so you can see what it looks like. And uh, we'll call this finished. This section anyhow. Okay, I've just got it roughly mounted up on the crankshaft just to see how it runs. Nothing's bolted down yet, so it's, it's a little bit hard. But you can see it's now finished. And you can see the idea of it running in between the two flanges. That'll give it more of a posit positive location. It's come out pretty good. I've got to cut this grub screw short yet. Fair bit of finishing to do. But we're getting there. So that's it for part eight. I forget what part we're up to now. I hope you've enjoyed it. I'll try to keep this part a little bit shorter. See you next time. Thank you for watching.